My Dr. Foster, the ranking member of the Financial Institution Subcommittee, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, to our witnesses. Um, the, I guess Mr. Reisman and maybe others have mentioned the, in, uh, the importance of uh, privacy enhancement techniques. Um, several years ago, when I was chairing the AI task force on this committee, we had I dragged in a witness to talk about homomorphic encryption and some of the uh, differential privacy techniques. Uh, and uh, I noticed just recently, and it was clear back then that these were not ready for prime time. There was a huge penalty for performance and, um, and the privacy wasn't actually that great. Uh, I noticed recently Google just announced this uh, Google Vault Gemma, which sounds like they're actually implementing training with differential privacy. And so I was wondering if uh, anyone on the committee could say something about, you know, are these techniques really ready for prime time? And is there the possibility of a regulatory safe harbor for firms that commit to using um, high quality uh, differential privacy and, uh, type tools. Thank you for the question. It's been quite extraordinary to see the progress on privacy enhancing technologies over just the last few years. I think you're right that not so long ago, many of them were not ready for prime time, but the curve has been quite steep in terms of many of them becoming much more feasible. Part of it is that many privacy enhancing technologies are compute intensive, but our computing power collectively is growing a lot stronger, so we're able to handle that. I think there was also a sense that a lot of them were complex and maybe out of reach, especially for smaller companies. There's a whole ecosystem now of expert companies that are able to consult and offer what you might call off-the-shelf privacy enhancing technologies to make them much more available much more broadly. So. Um, it would think, make sandboxes easier, Tim. Uh, any, the, other, any other sort of comments on the state of the art? Would you, anyone disagree that this is something that's pretty promising at this point? Well, uh, things like yeah. fully homomorphic encryption, uh, they provide very strong guarantees, and you're, yeah. you're correct that they're slower than conventional computing, but the leaps and bounds that they're making in that technology, it's orders of magnitude, thousand times better. You know, uh, you know, every time I turn around, it's gotten. Better. So I think that's moving very fast, and the hardware is going to ultimately start to close that gap as well. So I think we're going to we're going to benefit from that wave. Yeah, that could be a key component to a safe sandbox in a lot of these things. Absolutely. Um, it, it relating to one of the things we struggle with is uh, the small bank versus large bank trying to level the playing field. We can, and you know, it's one of the things that AI can potentially help us with. You know, soon all of us will have in our pocket the best team of lawyers that's ever been assembled. So it means if you ever get in a fight with a billionaire, a legal fight, you're, he's, the billionaire will not be able to get a better legal team than you have essentially for free. Now similarly, a small bank should, through AI, be able to have access to a really good AI risk advisor and a team of risk advisor AIs, so that even if it's a pretty small bank, this team will know every way that any bank has failed in the history of this country, and they just have a tremendous amount of knowledge, and make it easier to operate a small bank. Uh, similarly, uh, regulations and, and uh, reg tech, I think, is another real advantage. I, I did an interesting experiment a couple weeks ago where I said, okay, Claude, or whoever I was using, um, it, Right, give me the balance sheets for three banks that have just failed uh, for typical reasons, and it just knocked it out of the park. And then I said, now give us a resolution plan for each of those three, and it was great. I mean, it just said, okay, in this case, set up a bridge bank, in this case, try to try to merge it, in this case, just liquidate it. They were very sophisticated things, and I, I was impressed. I was wondering if any of you have a, a feeling for whether that's really kind of the future of regulation, that even small banks have all of their records electronic, if there was a standard interface for the, the accounting software that, that gets run that could report up to risk management and to the regulators, you could have real-time stress testing against dozens of, of scenarios every single night for the smallest bank, and that would be a real leveler. Um, and any thoughts? Is there a reason why things can't evolve that direction? Oh, thank you. Dr. Lau, you look. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, certainly. So we work with a lot of community banks and regional banks, backed by a number of them, and we see this every day, right? So this new AI technology can empower them to automate or streamline a lot of these compliance workflows that are very manually intensive that they just don't have staffing to do, but also, as you mentioned, unlock really new types of auditing and risk control. So 24 our continuous monitoring and observability into certain types of workflows that are highly regulated. That's all really exciting and, and actually being realized, materialized today across a lot of these, these smaller banks. But I'd say on the flip side, 
you also want to make sure that as these AI technologies enter in these and into these compliant uh, uh, regulated workflows, they're also having the right guardrails in place, and they're being used for those workflows appropriately in alignment with proper bank policies and procedures. So that's something that actually requires the technical expertise. The gentleman's time has expired. We ask you to complete that in writing.